last week, which was we were playing with crabs and shrimp. So this is a piece that's gonna hit the trash can, but I kind of started working out some nuances and ended up with this painting as my final product. And I thought I would demonstrate again tonight. This actually has a wash on it to give it a little bit more color and background. And this was one that I had worked on prior to that, trying to get kind of some nuances down of what I wanted to go where and what to add to the shrimp to make it a little more interesting. So I'm starting with a soft haired brush. So the uh, flow brush, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of ink and some red and mix those together. And what I was thinking about when I started this and I was looking at, I went online and pulled up information on She by Sher, who was the most famous shrimp and crab painter. And I've posted some of those in the classroom and so those typically started with one so I've mixed color here and it's got uh, red in it um, it's probably the carmen rather than or no, I'm sorry the uh, cad the, the equivalent of cadmium uh, where the carmen is more has more blue in it started with that and I had some black on the dish. So that's kind of what my mix is going to be. So then I'm going to start and it's still too dark. Um, and I'm going to one, two, three. So you're starting with the head of the of the of the uh, shrimp. I almost start almost always start with the head of an animal. Uh -huh. um, so what this is is kind of I don't know what the proper names for this is. I guess it's the head because the eye is going to go there. I'm going to now the third one, and I'm going to get a little creative as to where that third one's going to be. Okay, now I'm going to, the next part I'm gonna do is add it's basically an eye that pops out. All right, then the next thing, and I'm going to go ahead and rinse the brush again, because this was the part that was really black. I'm gonna pick up more of this color. And what I noticed as I was looking at the examples and the models, was that typically I have those coming out and then we also have feet coming out roughly at the joints. Okay, and then we do the claws. Now, the other thing that I noted when I was playing with these is that um, when Shibai Sure did his and some of the other artists, they're showing like little legs coming out like here, like this, or like they're like they're, they look like that. Um, I actually went and pulled some pictures of live shrimp to get an idea of what I was actually looking at. Now this one gets a little more complicated. So I'm gonna have his come up here. And so he has all of his parts, but they're underneath. 
right? Since he's underneath this one, he's also going to be underneath this one. So I'm showing movement in relationship. And let me come ahead and come here. And then the last part with these is usually there's some And the fluidity of that happens with practice. All right, and then the next thing I'm going to do are the crabs. And I thought the crabs were a lot of fun. And I'm going to change the color up a little bit and make these a little redder just to give it a little contrast. So with the crabs, typically what I've seen are three parts and then something for the dew claws. Okay. Then uh, what I've seen on the in the paintings is the first the first joint of the legs. Now this has got a proximity to this one. So the trick will be to show these legs in relationship to what's here. All right, so now for this one, I'm going to bring it down and add. And you notice this one now is sharing space. And this one I may bring out here. So for this one, you can see the, claw, the claws are moving. And the legs. And I'm gonna bring this one down under. And I'm not sure where the rest of this is going, so I'm not going to show it because it's going to get complex as I start adding this one over here. So you need to think about that as you're progressing. Now, the one thing I did notice is that, I mean, this one's gonna be underneath, I guess. Okay. And then we need some eyes. So you do two broad strokes in the body. Three. Three. And then, Three. And then uh, there's eight legs with, with uh, two joints. Three joints. Three, oh, three joints. Okay. And uh, then the claws come in last. Yep. And cool. when I did the body, one, two, three, I put three or two, uh, um, like half a leaf up here for where the, the dew claws are going to connect. Yes, but I think I need to study the crabs very carefully on my plate. You do. So there are three joints. What you see is the first one. If you are, if you like to eat crab, you usually see this. You may not, well, actually you see all of it. So I remember pulling them apart. It's been a while. You have that joint, you have that joint. And then the third joint or this, this joint is where the, the little feet come out or claws, I guess, they're crabs, close claws. All right, so then, so I've got a composition that's okay. I've got two, three shrimp and two crabs. So I've got an odd number. So when I was doing this, I was thinking about that. I actually ended up with four shrimp and, and two crabs and then added this third element to, to create the balance. Um, and also what this did is it started to tie the painting together. When I did this wash on the back, because this is a single shun, there's actually a little bit of the shape of a moon here. 
Um, I'm sorry, the lights are pretty bright, so you're missing some of those nuances. But I would suggest figuring out something to add in here that helps give you, helps tie the pieces together. Now, I'm looking at this one, and I'm thinking that maybe um, if I'm going to add uh, seaweed, I might do it from over here, or I could have some hanging down in, although I think about seaweed growing upright, um, not sure about having it uh, fall down in. Let's try it. Mm. Now, I like to paint the seaweed like this. So I'm turning my paper around. And I guess actually there's no reason for me to not have this direction as the composition either. So let me go ahead. And for the seaweed, this is kind of like what you go through for painting the pine needles. It's also what you use partly when you do the plum blossom. And I am thinking about my composition as I'm moving in here. I started out here because I actually want to um, think about how I'm going to tie these guides together so that they look like they're in the same pond. And so I'm going to bring this seaweed up and over. So it is now competing for space a little bit with this crab. And I'm going to do a similar thing over here. This is great meditation movement. And now these are roughly the same length. I'm gonna bring this one further in so that they're not lined up. And I'm going to have them connect up down here. And I'm going to pull this way because I don't actually want it to come out the center of the paper. So those are all things you kind of think about as you're composing um, any of your, comp you know, your compositions. Sorry, doing, doing pine needles and seaweed are um, hypnotic. I was going to use the word boring, but you get the idea here. So, you know, the question will be, do I change the composition back to this direction? And my answer is no. I really do want the baby to feel like it's growing up from the bottom. And just to kind of give some connections here, I'm going to start by adding some stems to give you a sense of movement. And you see, you don't have to paint everything. You can let the viewer fill in the blanks. Now, one thing I am looking at here is creating a sense of maybe three groups. So one, two, and three. And when this is dry, I would use a green wash to fill in and give it that sense of volume along with doing a wash in the background to finish tying it together. So I think that I'm gonna stop with this here, but what I wanna do is to demonstrate both the crab and the shrimp again. What makes these paintings cool and work is that they're not polite, right? They actually have to interact with their neighbors. Um, how much they interact is a different story, but they do need to have some interaction. Otherwise, it's kind of like when we paint um, flowers and we don't have any connections. And so it's the same idea here when we play with the shrimp and the crabs and other kinds of things.